NASCAR has had discussions with a group in Cincinnati about a potential street race. So let's go on a field trip and look at my possible layout. Welcome back to Break Hard, I'm Matt. So a few days ago, Adam Stern from the Sports Business Journal posted an article and said that NASCAR has targeted San Diego as its next possible location for a NASCAR street race. Within that article, he said that NASCAR has also spoken to groups in Cincinnati, Pittsburgh, as well as Baltimore about also hosting potential street races. Well, I live in Cincinnati, so I went ahead and mocked up a potential circuit around the banks between the stadiums downtown in Cincinnati along the Ohio River. So now let's go on a field trip and go down and drive around this proposed circuit that I have constructed here. I did not get out and do a live shot from there because the temperature is turned up to Satan's kitchen with the humidity set on Saigon, and I just really didn't want to get out of the air-conditioned car. So I went ahead and slapped a GoPro to the windshield of the Blackwing, and we drive around this whole circuit. So let's go get in the car now. All right, boys and girls, welcome to the field trip. Keep your hands, legs, heads, everything inside the vehicle at all times. We are currently on Marion Way, also known as Barry Larkin Way. Nobody calls it that. This will forever be Marion. To the right, we have the Smail Riverfront Park, which was not that nice when I was a child. That was gravel, railroad tracks, and dead fish from the Ohio River. Now, this is what I envision to be the front stretch right here, headed towards the Roebling Bridge. And honestly, this is the most troublesome part of the entire circuit, the layout that I have. It's very narrow, two lanes right through here, that bridge, inspiration for the Brooklyn Bridge, you can't widen that area. So that might have to be worked on. To the left side is where I envision the pits happening on the left side of the street, the right side used for racing. Of course, we have a median here in the center that might have to get knocked out so that we have three lanes of racing rather than just two. I also would hate to see those trees get knocked down there on the right, but that's a different topic. More line logger house off to the left. And then also on the left, you have Great American Ballpark, home of the Cincinnati Reds, where currently mediocre baseball is being played at. They live off of the last 50 years, World Series in 75, 76, and 90, and nothing to show for it basically since then. But hey, it's home to Mr. Redlegs and Rosie. You can wave to them. Gapper creeps me out, so we're not waving to him. As we continue down Marion, you can see the Ohio River off to your right. To your left is the Heritage Bank Center, which is where the Who disaster happened at. If you've ever wondered what an arena looked like back in the early 80s, just visit Heritage Bank Center. Probably should have been torn down 30 years ago, but it's still standing. So we're down to four lanes right here as we continue to head east on Marion, and we're going to go around the bend up here, and you have Sawyer Point off to your right. Perfect area to have concerts at, to have a nice fan center, fan zone, a lot like what Chicago had. So now we're going around this left-hand bend, a long left-hand bend up to Pete Rose Way. Not a great guy, but Cincinnati loves to adore him, so they named a street after him. Not even a great one at that. Now, you'll be turning left off of here onto Pete Rose Way. The lady in front of me, very curious why I was just continuing to talk by him to myself. In the car, don't worry about it, lady. Just go back to Kentucky. Everything will be fine. Turning left onto Pete Rose Way. Now, this is an area, as you head towards Great American Ballpark here, that I definitely think will probably need to be repaved if they end up having a street race here. A lot of washboard action going on. Uh, just kind of been worn out over the years. Now, we'll be turning right off of Pete Rose Way on to uh, Broadway. I know that lady running right there. Hello. Going up the hill here, you have this nice uphill S, a pretty gradual S, about four or five lanes through here, five lanes when we get up to the light. Now, this is where another little interesting spot will be. There's a median there as you're about to turn the corner. Great American Insurance in front of us, that tower there, hence the name Great American Ballpark that overlooks the ballpark. Your overlords constantly watching you. So that median's going to have to go to the left there. Probably should have taken the inside when I turn, but yeah, forget where I'm at sometimes. So now we're headed down Third Street. Third Street is going to be the perfect spot to have uh, the Cup Series come down. You're going to get the skyline there to your right, and you'll be able to get some pretty decent shots of these cars as they're coming uh, both to you and away from you uh, with some nice background shots as well. So we're going to continue going down Third Street here until we get to Walnut. We need this RS Camaro. Come on, let's go get past us here so we can merge over. And then we're going to be turning left onto Walnut Street. Now you have the Scripps building to the right as well making sure we get you know the two big buildings in Cincinnati into the shot here, turning left onto Walnut. Now this is an interesting part because Cincinnati does have a streetcar system which runs on Walnut, but with three lanes here to the left, you don't really need that fourth lane of the streetcar to the right, so you could definitely put the wall up. You don't want to make the olds of Cincinnati mad, 
Mention the streetcar. That's enough to set them off. But it's not like San Jose. We didn't go ramping over it. There is, however, a pretty hellacious bump right here, right there. Bam. As you're approaching the banks, you have residents off to the left, yard house to the right. Recently caught on fire. Hopefully they can find themselves back in business sometime soon. Now, this is also a pretty narrow spot here. You go from three lanes down to two lanes, and then you have this roundabout, which can take you across the Roebling into northern Kentucky. But for us, we are going to go straight, not sing the Queen City. We want to race the Queen City here. The glass building to your left, there is a merry-go-round within there. Why? I don't know. Rich people just wanted to have a merry-go-round for some reason. Now, we're making a right-hander. Now, we're going to head back up towards 2nd Street. This is where things going to have to change a little bit because while I could go up to 2nd, I can't turn left on to 2nd. That would be breaking the law. I'd be driving into oncoming traffic. But now you would go down 2nd Street and you continue going down that until you uh, approach Elm Street, which, of course, is going to turn you left and you're going to go in front of Paul Brown Stadium, also now known as Paycor Stadium. People want to call it that they can, but Paul Brown Stadium, home of the Cincinnati Bengals, once mid Cincinnati Bengals, and then Joe Burrow came along and made them so much better. You turn left onto, now you'll turn left onto Elm, and you have this pretty nice S curve as you come around here. You're going to basically snake your way around the stadium. You have the uh, Andrew Brady Music Center to your left there as well. There's also a lawn out front. So if they wanted to utilize some Cincinnati spots if in the street race, you could definitely have your concerts there. You could have it on the lawn at Smell Riverfront Park. You'd have it down at Sawyer Point. And now you'll be turning left off of Elm back onto Marion. Now, if you were at Chicago, you knew they had plenty of Chicago hot dog stands as well as Garrett popcorn delicacies of the Windy City. Well, for the Queen City here in Cincinnati, which is actually the Queen City, not Charlotte. Sorry to all the people that think that that's true. Uh, you have your Skyline Cheese Conies and your Grater's Ice Cream. Those are going to be the two most prevalent stands. If you see a La Rosa's Pizza stand, if this event does happen, walk away. That's trash pizza you do not want to try it if they have montgomery in also trash barbecue don't try that that's bad representation of cincinnati skyline is an acquired taste and graters is maybe the greatest ice cream out there i'm not snobby about my ice cream very often but nothing's ever going to top graters back out onto marion way though that will take you for a lap of the circuit. Today's video is brought to you by Driven Sunglasses. Head over to drivensunglasses.com today. Use code BREAKHARD at checkout for 20% off plus free shipping. Great sunglasses. I am very partial to the Classic as well as the Camber. Neither of them are in my office right now. They are both downstairs because I wear them on a daily basis. So head over to drivensunglasses.com today. Code BREAKHARD at checkout for 20% off plus free shipping. So as you can see, there's a decent bit of elevation change within that circuit. There's certainly spots that are going to have to be repaved certain certainly some street improvements that are going to have to be made as well getting rid of medians mainly my biggest concern as i said in the video there on the ride along is basically that front stretch area along marion way where the uh where you go underneath the roebling bridge right there that bridge is very old and is not going to be changed in terms of the layout right there so to get through there you're basically looking at a two-lane road now nascar can do that that'll be basically the tightest part of the entire circuit uh and it's certainly something they can live with especially if you put the pit road on the other side of there but that's probably the tightest area and that might be the area that needs the most amount of work but i still think that it would definitely be manageable to use that entire area and it really limits the amount of traffic impact that you'll have here i know a lot of people in cincinnati will talk about how bad the traffic is that's mainly because they've never gone anywhere that actually has bad traffic the traffic's not that bad there they don't know how to merge in cincinnati i'll give them that people here take uh, you trying to merge onto the highway as a personal offense and will fight you over letting you merge because zipper just doesn't make any sense to them but for the most part traffic's not that bad and this doesn't really limit the number of inlets and outlets that you'll have from 71 and 75 there's still plenty of them within the city Plenty of parking north of the city, plenty of parking east in the city as well. As much as people in the suburbs love to say, hey, there's no parking in Cincinnati. That's why we don't go out town. There's more parking spots than there are people in Cincinnati. Uh, so there's plenty of parking to be had. Uh, obviously, I think one of the biggest concerns some people will have as well is there's some residents at the banks right there. There's a couple of apartment buildings. Um, and they're concerned about being cut off there. It's still accessible, especially uh, there's an entire parking garage that runs from Paul Brown Stadium, uh, where the Bengals play, all the way over to Great American Ballpark, where the Reds play. You can access that as well. So give them some parking passes. They can all park under the garage and be able to access um, getting out of the circuit area by going towards Paul Brown Stadium. Uh, they'll also be able to go down 2nd Street and then cut through the Riverfront Transit Center. There's a transit center that runs underneath 2nd Street in Cincinnati as well, and also be able to exit that way. Um, 
other concerns people might have, since I don't have the public transportation that Chicago has, you can take the train, you know, to the racetrack in Chicago and Cincinnati. There's a bus system, which does a really good job with uh, Cincinnati does a lights and arts festival every two years in October called Blink. If you've never been, definitely attend like a million people over three days will be down there. Um, the the bus service here does a lot of park and rides around the city and the buses people down they could do the same thing for something like this as well so i'm interested to see what people's feedback is i think um it's a decent layout i think it could definitely be changed around a little bit if needed uh obviously that really tight spot where you go down uh, towards the road lane and there's that little bit of a roundabout right there where it becomes two lanes that either will have to likely be widened or you'll just have to turn um right there at yard house before you get down there so i uh, obviously it can be tweaked and moved around and everything that goes along with that, but could be a pretty interesting circuit if they want to go for it. At the end of the day, I don't think the circuit happens uh, unless Kroger or Fifth Third wants it to. If they want it to, then city will absolutely bend over and and make it happen. If they don't want it to, well, city council is going to put up the biggest fight in the world like they're the Nashville city council. Which is really annoying because city councils in mid-sized cities certainly think that they are way more important than they actually are. But would be interesting. Let me know your comments um, on the on the layout and everything that goes along with that. Like and subscribe to the channel. Follow me on TikTok at Break Hard, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at Break Hard Blog.